Hello everyone. So today we are going to start with our new concept. This is actually a core concept. The name of the concept is power. In this unit, which is power, sovereignty and international relation, there are the four key concepts, right? First one is power. The second one is sovereignty. And the third one is legitimacy. Legitimacy. That's the third concept. And the fourth one is interdependence. This is the fourth key concept. So today we are going to take the concept of power. All right. So today we are going to study the concept of power. Now what this concept talks about. Let's go further. So as I already mentioned that we are going to study these four key concepts. If you have noticed in my previous videos, I have already covered the theories which are related to this unit. The theory of realism, liberalism and capitalism, right? And communism. I have covered many more theories which you can refer, which you can attach to this unit. Now further to this one, we watch this video. Now this video is of around 4 minutes and this video covers the definition of superpower. So as you already know that uh, a superpower can be considered any state that has preeminent, preeminent, global influence right so any power which has preeminent global influence can be considered as a superpower we use one more term that is hegemony right in global politics we use this term and hegemony is the political economic and military predominance of one state over other states right so not only in one sphere but in different sphere political economic social right or you can name many more when a one country a has predominance over the other states right over the other states it is known as hegemonic state for example in ancient greece hegemony denoted the political military dominance of the hegemon city-state over other city-states. So, in ancient, when we used to call Greece as the hegemony, so that means that politico-military, so they predominantly focused on military and when they have the dominance of that hegemon city-state over the other city-states, that was called as hegemonic state, right? So, this is first to understand the concept of superpower, the understand the concept of hegemony. Now, this video, you have to watch it. I'll paste the link of this presentation in the description box below. You have to understand that in this video, there are different uh, characteristics of hegemony, right? Which is also called as seven dimensions of power. So, let's take those seven dimensions of power. I, you have to watch this video, but I'll just tell you that what are those seven dimensions of power or how a country is considered as a superpower. So, there are two. One, one is natural and the second one is social. Now, under natural, it comes geography. A country can be considered a powerful country, a superpower or hegemonic power due to its geography, right? For example, USA. USA, uh, uh, to become as hegemonic or to become a superpower, its geography played an important role, right? Second, it can be population. Think of the example where the population played an important role in a country to make it superpower. The third one is resources. Due to resources, a country became powerful country, right? In case of population, you can think of Japan, you can think of China, you can think of um, Vietnam, you can think of many more countries. Resources, you can think of um, Norway, you can think of Middle Eastern, a few of the Middle Eastern countries, right? Then in terms of the social factor, you think of economy, You think of military that how 
these factors play an important role to make a country uh, to make a country superpower another diplomacy and the last seventh one national identity okay so these are the seven factors to play an important role to make a country superpower so in the class if we happen to watch this video then we would be discussing a few examples which are connected to these factors okay or the dimension or those which are important to play an important role to make a country superpower or to make a country hegemonic one clear okay now the next now the next one is again a video because till the time i just want to create some basic concept uh, connected to power right so the first one is talking about superpower and hegemon then the next video do you think that uh, power is static power is evolving power is changing right or power is transitioning from one country to another country so as you can see in this video this video is basically talking about that usa which is considered as a super powerful country or the china which is considered as a super power country now probably there are the other countries which are emerging now mexico vietnam and india so this video gives example of these three countries first it talks about that how how china emerged as a superpower country right and uh, the role of manufacturing units in the spatial context of context of china and globalization this video talks about and further this video talks about that now how vietnam mexico and india emerging as the superpower nation so that means that the definition of superpower is not static it's evolving right now um uh th this um, in the speaker's notes you will find the notes of this video and even you will find the notes of china versus africa also that do you consider africa as emerging super power if yes then in what sense what are the uh, statistical data or what are the facts to consider africa as the growing super power continent right so kindly go through that i'm not reading it aloud here but you will understand what this video and uh, the analysis of china and africa talking about going further in the presentation now we understand the concept of power uh, as per ib definition right so power is a central concept as i said it that throughout our 16 key concept power would be playing an important role so it's a core concept in the study of global politics and a key focus of the course power can be seen as ability to effect effect change okay it effect change right and rather than being viewed as a unitary or independent force it is never considered as unitary or independent because it is always interdependent concept right because power can be exercised when someone is sitting in front of you or when you are exercising your power on someone else right so it is neither unitary nor independent force it is an aspect of relations among people functioning within a social organization right contested relationships between people and groups of people dominate politics particularly in this era of increased globalization and so understanding the dynamics of power plays a prominent role in understanding global politics so this is what the concept of power is all about number 1 that it is the ability to effect change number 2 it cannot be exercised as unitary or independent force number 3 its relations amongst people functioning within a social um, organization is considered very well under the concept of power now the next one again there is a video and this is a lovely video which first talks about the definition of the power then in this video it talks about the six sources of power right so the first source of the power is physical now physical you already know because we have uh, uh, discussed briefly uh, about physical when we were talking about um, geography right then the second one is wealth in this video it shows wealth now again think of the example where uh, the power is derived through uh, from physical from wealth third state action 
okay where the government is taking action the fourth social norms fifth ideas sixth numbers right so these are the sources of the power from where power is derived then this video talks about that how power operates in um, in the society so it gives three dimension that how power is operated one is power is never static as i mentioned earlier second power is like water that means it just keep flowing from one regime to another and the third one is power compounds right so whoever has power that person will try to get more power okay power compounds so this is all about uh, this video you don't have to watch this video till the end but try to get the gist connected to the six main sources of power and how power operates in the society now next is relational power as i have been mentioning again and again about the relational power that means that the power cannot be operated in isolation power is always relational this is in in the relationship with another state and it uses its influence to change the behavior of another state right this is what you call as power when you happen to change the behavior of another state how either by using hard power soft power or smart power so if you are using all these things or one of them then you call it as the relational power now in terms of uh, this relational power i'll i would love to discuss these two thinkers right who have spoken about the three types of relational power number one is joseph nye and the second one is steven lukes here he is okay so first let's talk about joseph nye so joseph nye said that uh, if one happens to exercise power then there would be three ways to exercise power one threats and rewards second controlling the agenda and the third one is establishing preferences now understand threats and rewards so in case if a country a wants to build relationship with country b then one way could be reward right reward in the form of aids in the form of uh, any kind of diplomacy um, a donation it can be it can be even the recent example vaccine diplomacy what india happened to do with the neighboring countries or with some of the african and the caribbean uh, countries right so that was the example of the reward where india happened to give lot of vaccines covid shield to its neighboring countries right um another example you can think of in reward aid when usa happened to give a lot of aid to haiti or to other uh, countries just to build its image or just to showcase its power is it a hard power no it's a very soft power it's a subtle tool what country a is implying on country b so that's called reward now threat threat it can be in the form of hard power so in case if a country happens to threat another country by putting some kind of sanctions by uh, calling off uh, it, um, its diplomats or calling off embassies right so any kind of threatening can be given to country b so in this global politics power can be exercised either through reward which is considered as soft power or through threats which is considered as hard power another way can be controlling the agenda where the country a is limiting the choices of the other state in order to reach the desired goal right so controlling the agenda it can be that the country is um always controlling the agenda in country b so that it can influence its own agenda country a's agenda on country b i'm sure you have so many examples around you where you can see that country a is continuously forcing country b to follow a particular agenda what country a loves find out and uh, let me know what that example is all about the third one is establishing preferences getting the other state to want the same goal as your state all right so it it's very closer to 
point number two, where again country A is establishing its own preferences. It's influencing country B to that extent where country B happens to do what country A is suggesting. Would it be considered as soft power? We usually do not categorize under hard or the soft power because it is again, it can be very subtle form or it can be very um, open form also where country is doing openly. For example, Russia happened to control the agenda in United Nations Security Council in such a way that Kosovo has not been given full membership till the date, right? It has been controlling the agenda or establishing preferences in, in United Nations Security Council in such a way. I hope you understood that what Joseph Nye is talking about in terms of these three types of relational power. These types of relational powers are nothing but it explains how power is exercised in global politics right this is what it is talking about then you have the next example which is of Stephen Luke's Stephen Luke's he's still alive he was born in 1941 and he is a British political and social theorist um, so Stephen Luke's describe almost on the similar manner you don't have to mug up these uh, uh, relational power that how power is exercised in case if you happen to mix six of them right three from Joseph Nye and three from Stephen Lux it's completely all right he says decision making right that the how country A is influencing its decisions on country B agenda setting the same what we discussed here right controlling the agenda what we were discussing in point two that's the same agenda setting over here thought control that means establishing preferences so this is almost the same now he also called these uh, three things as the as three phases of power or three dimensions of power that anal uh, this analysis how power is exercised in the real world uh, real world as i said it so first power can involve the ability to influence the making of decisions right Second, it may be reflected in the capacity to shape the political agenda, right? Shape the political agenda, influence the decision making and thus prevented the decision being made. And the third, it may take the form of controlling people's thoughts by manipulating of their preferences, okay? By manipulating their preferences. So this is about Stephen Lukes and Joseph Nye who are talking about this. Now connected to Joseph Nye, as you already know who is Joseph Nye because in my previous video on theories, I have already discussed that Joseph Nye who uh, coined the term, uh, who propounded this theory of neoliberalism, right? With Kyohan and uh, who talked about complex interdependence, who talked about uh, the concept of asymmetrical power, right? Do you remember all these things? It's there um, on the theories videos. And then he happened to talk about even uh, the distinction between hard power, soft power and pioneered the theory of soft power and later on uh, discussed about smart power. Right. And this whole thing became very popular um, during Clinton administration and more recently the Obama administration. So this is what Joseph Nye is all about. Now, highly recommended that you watch this video of Joseph Nye. This is of 18 minutes. You will see the link uh, in the description box on the presentation. This video majorly talks about power transition. As I said, that power is transitioning. What is transitioning? Tra transitioning power is transitioning from one um, zone or one region to another region if i say from west to east okay so in case if i say rise to asia instead rise of north america or europe that's called power transition and then second he talks in the video about power diffusion okay so power diffusion very if you remember, he happens to say that it's not just about the state actors, state actors which are important, but even the known state actors, NSA, are also important. So power is power is diffused. Power is diffused not only within the state actors, but even 
with the known state actors as well so he starts his video with power transition and power diffusion and then he happens to talk about um, uh, the definition of power where he is including threats coercion payments and all these things he happens to talk about zero sum game and uh, sum game right and then he talks about three dimensions of power uh, highly recommended to you that you watch this video and in the class we can discuss some of the points uh, connected to the video we'll move further here now uh, there are some more related concepts to power right now in this related concepts to power one is rising power or revisionist power now understand this one that rising power are the one or the revisionist power uh, are the one who are revising their power once upon a time in history they were the powerful uh, countries but then they became dormant country and now they are revising they want to become powerful again for example china india iran and lot of other countries you see where in history they were considered as a powerful country but then they are emerging or revising their power again second related concept or a word what we happen to use is of declining power declining power where the country is losing its power right um, now you may question okay whether the usa is a world superpower in decline do you think that china is also declining if you have watched that video the one which i was talking about see here um yeah this one in this video right so in this video you would be able to see that how power is shifting from china to the other countries right so this is called about declining power right um then power diffusion i have already spoken about power diffusion that rise of non state actors right and the concept of globalization should be considered as diffused diffused power or not so these are the few terminologies which are connected to the concept of power i hope this is clear there is a article which is in the speaker's notes and this talk about the revisionist power highly recommended to read this article and then have a discussion in the class going further now i am uh, going back to joseph nai and uh, discussing those types of power what joseph nai is discussing about so first thing he discussed about hard power now understand that when we are discussing about hard power we are basically talking about the two words which are highly connected to hard power one is force second is coercion what do you understand by coercion coercion means pressurize to force someone right this is very much connected to force only so when country a is forcing country b to do what country a wants forcefully right or coer coercively right then it it will be considered as hard power what the definition says here the term hard power describes a nation or political body's ability to use economic incentives or military strength to influence others action actors behaviors right economic incentives means either by putting economic sanctions or by using military right in case if a country is using one of these things either economic sanctions or military strength or even cutting off the diplomat uh, diplomatic ties that would be considered as hard power it relies on a measure of power propounded by the realist school of thought so what it talks about that this is highly connected to the realist school of thought right because realist school of thought believe in hard power not in the soft power in the realist school power is linked with the possession of certain tangible resources including population territory natural resources economic and military strength among others so that tangible which you can touch right intangible which you can't touch so in the realist school power is linked with all the resources with all those kind of resources which you can touch population territory natural resources economic and military right hard power is defined by the use of such resources to spur the behavior of other entities to provoke the behavior of other entities i hope this one is clear to you what is hard power so these are the pointers in the hard power okay what examples can you think under hard power it can be military action against isis right 
terrorist organization military force where us used against saddam hussein in 2003 that can also be considered as hard power or russia ukraine the recent war going on that can also be considered hard power you have multiple examples to think on hard power think of one example from your side what you think as hard power going further soft power now so soft power is using two concept the way hard power used force and coercion here it is persuasion and influence right persuasion means persuade to persuade someone influence to influence someone in very subtle way that the person does not get to know about that influence at all so what does soft power say a state or group tries to achieve its aims through persuasion or influence state a will persuade state b to do what it wants with or without state b being aware that what that this is what state a wants remember being aware all right so that means this is not explicit this is very important this is not explicit but this is an implicit concept okay it is played at very subtle level where the country b doesn't get to know about country a to persuade state uses now what does it use culture foreign policy remember foreign policy needs to be ethical and exemplary right it should not be an ethical one and political values for example democracy rule of law tolerance justice okay so through these things or through these factors country a can influence country b an unpopular or unethical foreign policy for example 2003 iraq invasion or crimea invasion or a lack of political freedom at home may all reduce a state soft power so in case if a country is using extensively unethical behavior then it may reduce its soft power clear so these all are the examples of the soft power development aid plays a huge part in powerful states trying to achieve their outcomes through persuasion so what are the examples we have it i'll just erase this one what we have written down here so that we have more space all right so here number 1 development aid apart what we discussed culture foreign policy democracy rule of law tolerance justice all in ethical way another one is development aid for example united states uh, aid agency gives most aid to countries where development matters to us security interest in 2015 pakistan and afghanistan received the most us aid but you can now highlight some recent examples also china has pledged to um, aid trillion dollars in africa in return china has favorable access to natural resources from african states number 3 example natural disaster ranging from the south asian tsunami in 2005 haiti earthquake in 2009 and the west african ebola outbreak have seen huge donations from states and even the deployment of the troops to help right even the military troops have been employed to help these countries sporting events such as london sochi or the recent one which is upcoming is fifa in qatar all these have also have been considered as the soft power clear what is soft power to you okay now further to this one you have this uh, very short article because this article though this article is uh, uh, a long uh, um, long in the sense of its uh, year uh, published year uh, so it was published i guess in 2011 or 15 somewhere but it states that uk has been considered as uh, the top most soft power why because on the basis of its culture which is held by internationally re recognized pop stars and football clubs second digital and global engagement because it is engaged with multiple diplomatic uh, with with multiple countries but after brexit this is questionable right so this article is is the old one but still you can just refer to understand that how soft power or, or what are the attributes or what are the factors to calculate the soft power right so this article is all about that now there's one more article 
or we can have discussion in the class regarding this article or you can add many more points from your uh, side what do you think about us monopoly on the use of soft power do you think that us monopoly or us soft power is decreasing because of the over usage of hard power if yes then state some of the examples so you you may read this article come prepare with some of the facts and the figures and we'll have a discussion in the class regarding that going further now here smart power now what did nice said that nai identifies a strategy that balances hard power and soft power where both force and persuasion force and persuasion are used together to achieve the desired outcome so that means soft, soft power a smart power is a combination of hard and soft for example in 2015 the us and its partners in the p5 who are those p5 permanent five countries of united nations security council right who are those countries uk us russia france and china these are the five permanent countries of united nations security council plus one that is germany use soft power and hard power while dealing with iran they use the combination of economic sanctions the threat of possible military action and diplomatic process to secure a deal with iran to reduce its nuclear weapon program so you have this example so this is the example of smart power you have to tell me one more example what you can uh, see around you where a country happen to use smart power that's that's uh, that's hard power plus soft power on country b all right now going further and there is another kind of power which is considered as a uh, sharp power sharp power can include attempt by one country to manipulate now remember that everywhere we are using two words right for hard power we used um, coercion and force for soft power we used uh, influence right and um, what was that i myself forgot that um persuasion right influence and persuasion and then here you have the sharp power so sharp power uh, is manipulation and then you have distorting right distorting the information so it can include attempt by one country to manipulate and manage information about itself in the news media and educational system of another country for the purpose of misleading or dividing public opinion in a target country or for masking or diverting attention away from negative information about itself so that means it's a deliberate effort by country a to manipulate or to distort the information in country b remember that soft power is not doing that it's very implicit it's at the subtle form uh, format but whereas sharp power this happens to do it explicitly to distort and by using unethical uh, means the link between sharp power and authoritarian regime is is as stated christoph walker this approach takes advantage of the asymmetry between free and unfree system allowing authoritarian regimes both to both to limit free expression and to distort political environments in democracies while simultaneously shielding their own domestic public spaces from democratic appeal coming from abroad so that means it is linked by christopher worker that this is usually found in the authoritarian regimes but i would say that now this is not the case only with the authoritarian regimes but there are the other countries also where they have been using with regards to the other countries to manipulate the data right so this is considered as soft uh, sharp power um then you have so many examples of the sharp power uh, there are Uh, the, the, there are a lot of uh, examples which are published in the news where china happened to manipulate the data in the other countries so definitely you can go through that um okay um so this slide basically talks what we have spoken about the sharp power right um i leave it here because i feel that you can read it and you can understand and this is the repetitive data what we have already talked about sharp power which is basically manipulation and the distortion of the data in country b just to pictureize its own image in a more uh, favorable manner right 
all right so this is all about sharp power now we go further and we talk about what are the types of power now we have already discussed about the types of power in terms of hard power soft power smart power and sharp power right now further to this one we talk about military power military power which is a major component of the hard power it is often measured now when you me measure military power it can be measured either considering the size of a state's military or military spending or the usefulness of that military which is standing at the border right so multiple ways can be there just to measure the power of military now here this is uh, from the pearson uh, book and this this is actually talking about in the form of claim and counterclaim ib has already asked one question on this one whether the military power is redundant or not redundant means useless or not so on your left side you see it military power less useful and significant okay so that means it is not too useful on your right hand you see that it is useful and significant so that means military power not too good military power is still relevant right so there are the three points of the claim and counterclaim first one is talking about uh, contemporary known state actors uh, which are emerging they have not been controlled by military okay then here it is talking about that still it has been seen that they have been controlled very well right so if you see then military power has been unsuccessful in major conflict these examples are given and they do not work against contemporary known state actors right so this is this whole debate is created whether the military powerful is really important or not important the second one it talks about that interstate war what is interstate war interstate war the war between two countries what is intrastate war intrastate war is war within a country remember interstate between two countries or amongst uh, countries and intra within a country so this claim says that interstate war is decreasing but you have example of russia ukraine so you can definitely counter this claim thing right and here it says that intrastate war is increasing and for this one you require uh, weapons and here it says that you do not require weapons because this one is decreasing then the third point says that a uh, lot of countries are there he, which really do not want now western troops right so this example given over here that now western troops to be deployed and people are just making chaos against it then the another example it is uh, given about responsibility to protect this responsibility to protect it's a charter by united nation either i have already made a video or i'll be making a video on this one where um, this is the responsibility of united nation to send its military troops to those countries where uh, the responsibility of sovereign the country's sovereign nation or the country's sovereign state has failed okay or has been failing there this is the duty or responsibility of united nation to protect that one so in that scenario the usage of military power is significant one all right so these are the three claims and the three counter claims to debate whether military power is really useful or military power is becoming redundant or useless now the next slide the next slide says can military power be used as the soft power so now see that in in the upcoming slide you will see two sides of the same type of the power now here what do you see the topic is military now military is used as hard power majorly which is the school of thought realist right now here it can be used as soft as well so military can be used as hard as soft when hard when it is using all the hard tools to to take revenge on country b soft 
when it is used as the humanitarian aid by sending the troops in this video only i spoke a while later a, um, a while earlier about the soft usage of the military by deploy by deploying the troops to help in the humanitarian crisis right so these are the examples where it has been done Mm, another example you can think of pakistan flooding in 2011 where um, uh, india even sent its military troops to pakistan and even the other countries also sent in india when there was the tsunami okay many more examples you will find it here they are written as well so the two sides of military power okay now we go further economic power now the second type of power now the second type of why this one is not functioning okay now in economic power again you see two sides of the same thing one is economic sanctions this one is not working so that's why it's a thicker one yeah sanctions and the second one is trade relations all right sanctions and the trade relations now i'll give you some time in the class to discuss one case study okay you can either watch one of the videos or the recent videos to discuss that how a country a used sanctions on country b to destroy the economy of that country b right so that is considered as the hard power then trade relation is considered as the soft power where you have the example of country a investing so much in country b now this example can be considered as the negative example because now there is a term which is very popular term called as debt trap where country china is creating debt trap in other countries by giving a lot of loan and then taking that land or important or strategic location on lease right uh, but you can discuss any other example where country a is investing in country b to help country right so these are the two sides of economic power one is sanction and the second one is trade relations right so come up with the example in the class to discuss now the third one is structural power now what is the structural power now in the structural power the ideological struggle between capitalist and communist models of economic development is the most powerful example of this the dominance of the capitalist model was largely achieved through a mix of hard power and the attractiveness of its economic success More recently western power have tried to remove authoritarian regimes and build up democratic models of government by using the theory of democratic peace theory right democratic peace theory to build the democratic uh, democratic regime across the world so structural power where the country a influences its own ideological or any uh, ideas or um, through um, uh, through structural political system mean in country b that is called structural power i highly recommend you to watch the video of democratic peace theory which is under theory sec uh, uh, section and then think of a, an example where country a used democracy uh, to bring democracy in country b forcefully okay one example you have to think that second example you have to think where country a influenced country b by using a structural power in a very subtle way in a very soft power way where country b changed its political system as per country a am i clear what you are supposed to do so you have to think like that now the last pa uh, power cyber power now here some of the case studies are there to discuss first is you have to tell me that who is julian assange what this case study is all about the the second one is who is edward snowman that you have that you have to talk to me and you have to tell me in 
what do you understand by cyber power which country is using cyber power the most you have to tell me the example of nanda's plant in iran what exactly happened to that you have to tell me whether in the recent issue of russia and ukraine is there any cyber power which has been used by the two uh, by the two of them right so this is what all about cyber power all right so this is the concept of power and these are some of the questions which ib has already asked on power um keep an eye on these questions we will discuss it later on the video on paper 2 it's already uh, available kindly watch that video try to solve these questions and stay tuned <laughs>